Welcome back. I hope you all had a chance to do the uh, virtual discovery lab. So let's continue. So here are the results of the lab when I did it with our circuit kits. I used a 10 ohm resistor and a 51 ohm resistor along with a battery for the power supply. As looking at the uh, series circuit, you can see that we had a 2.74 volt EMF in the circuit. Let's see if this circuit satisfies Kirchhoff's loop rule. On the uh, first resistor, there was a voltage drop, a negative voltage, in other words, potential difference of 0.45 volts. And on resistor two, there was a negative 2.28 eight volts potential difference. If you add those two together, you get 2.73 voltage drop and a 2.74 EMF. So to within the degree of precision of my lab, I think we can say that Kirchhoff's loop rule was confirmed. While we're still on the series circuit, let's take a look at the currents. You'll notice that the current coming out of the battery, 0.0 for seven amps was the same as the current through the first resistor and it was the same as the current through the second resistor. Now let's take a look at the parallel circuit. Here you see that the EMF on the uh, from the battery was 2.5 volts and the voltage drop across the first resistor was also 2.5 volts. So the voltage drop is negative and the voltage drop across the second resistor was 2.5 volts. So these also satisfy Kirchhoff's loop rule because remember, path doesn't matter as far as potential con is concerned. So if you start at say the lower left of your circuit, then you go up through the battery and gain 2.5 volts there. And then you go down through the first resistor and lose 2.5 volts there, you end up back at zero. Whereas if you start at the same point, but go through the second resistor this time, uh, you still gain 2.5 volts going through the battery and you still lose 2.5 volts going through the resistor. So you still end up back at zero. Uh, so this does confirm a Kirchhoff's loop rule. Now let's look what the currents do, because in this case, the currents are not the same. We have the current coming out of the battery as 0.31 amps, but the current through branch one, that's the resistor one, that's the lower resistance was 0.26 amps and the current through the second loop was 0.05 amps. We're going to talk about these results uh, when we learn about uh, Kirchhoff's second rule. So let's talk about that second rule right now. Um, as we saw in the series circuit, all of the currents were the same. But in the parallel circuit, the current coming out of the battery was equal to the sum of the currents going through each of the two branches. Now this makes sense in terms of conservation of charge. Remember what we learned about conservation of charge in electrostatics, that you cannot create or destroy charge. Well, currents are the flow of charges. So if you have charge flowing through a conductor, Unless the charge is being stored in the conductor at some point, then the charge flowing into the conductor at a steady state flow must equal the charge flowing out of it. If there was more charge flowing in than out, then you would have to say that charge is being destroyed. So imagine I have it symbolized here, the big arrow going into our conductor and a smaller arrow going out. That's not allowed. On the other hand, if you had more charge flowing out than in in our conductor, that would mean that charge is being created. That could be symbolized like that. And that's also not allowed. So the second rule for circuits is called Kirchhoff's junction rule. And that says this, at any junction point in a circuit where the current can divide, the sum of the currents into the junction equals the sum of the currents out of the junction. So that worked in our experiment uh, we did with the uh, series and parallel resistors. In the series arrangement, the current was the same throughout because there was no junction 
anywhere in my circuit, the current flowing in had to equal the current flowing out, so the current couldn't change at all. But in a place where we did have a junction, where the current flowing in was coming out of the battery, and then the currents flowing out were the currents flowing through each of the two resistors, the sum of the currents flowing out, that's resistor currents, added up to the current flowing out of the battery. Here is a, another example of that same thing. We have a 7 amp current flowing into a junction point and a 5 amp current flowing out of that junction point. So the other current flowing out must be 2 amps by Kirchhoff's junction rule. Let's see if we can use Kirchhoff's loop rule and Kirchhoff's junction rule to arrive at a rule for the equivalent resistance in a series circuit. We know from Kirchhoff's junction rule that their current flowing in each resistor of a series circuit must be the same because no other place for the current to flow. There are no junctions. I could write that like this. The total current is equal to the current one, it's equal to current two, etc. And the voltage drop across the series circuit must be the sum of the voltage drops across each one. That we get that from Kirchhoff's loop rule. So therefore, I could say delta V total is equal to delta V1 plus delta V2 plus et cetera, if there's more elements. Now, in every circuit element, the voltage is equal to the current times resistance. That's what resistance means. So I could write that like this. The circuit current times equivalent resistance of the circuit is equal to the current in resistor 1 times resistor 1 plus the current resistor 2 times resistor 2, etc. But as you've just seen, all those currents are the same. So I could just replace them all with I. And since they're the same on both sides of the equation, I could just divide out by that, leaving me with this formula for the equivalent resistance in a series circuit. Let's apply this rule to the circuit you see at the bottom here. On the left, you see a circuit with an 18 volt potential difference and a three ohm resistor and a six ohm resistor in series. Now, this one is simple enough to solve with proportional reasoning. After all, there must be twice as much voltage drop across a six ohm resistor as a three ohm resistor because the currents are the same and voltage is equal to current times resistance. We would know then that since it's 18 volts total, it'd have to be 12 volts dropped across a 6 ohm resistor and 6 volts dropped across a 3 ohm. But let's say that we weren't going to do it that simple way. Let's try to figure out what the equivalent resistance is. So we have a resistor of 3 ohms and a resistor of 6 ohms. That adds up to 9 ohms equivalent resistance according to our formula. So therefore, 18 volts divided by 9 ohms means our circuit current must be 2 amps. And indeed, that works out for what we just did a moment ago. If we take 2 amps and multiply it by 6 ohms, that gives me 12 volts. And if we take 2 amps and multiply it by 3 ohms, that gives me 6 volts. And so we have confirmed our formula. So now let's apply the rules to resistors in parallel. You remember that in a parallel circuit, we did have a junction. And that junction meant that the current coming out of the battery got split up. But the total amount of current in each branch has to add to the total current coming out of our battery. I could write that like this. I total is equal to I1 plus I2 plus etc. But also by Kirchhoff's loop rule, if you follow it around, if you gain voltage going through the battery, you just go through one element on your way back to the battery, so the total amount of voltage drop across each element must be the same. I could write that like this. Delta V total is equal to delta V1 is equal to delta V2, etc. Now, we know that the voltage divided by the resistance in any circuit element should equal the current, so I could write that first equation, substitute in the second equation like this, I could say that delta V divided by the equivalent resistance from my parallel circuit is equal to delta V divided by R1 plus delta V divided by R2 plus etc. In each case, I just wrote delta V because all the potential differences are the same. If I then divide out by delta V, I'm left with this. 
1 over the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus etc. Let's apply that to the sample circuit down below there. We have a 3 ohm resistor and a 6 ohm resistor again, but now they're in parallel. So this says that 1 over the equivalent resistance of my circuit is equal to 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. Well, 1 over 3 is the same as 2 over 6, so this gives me 2 over 6 plus 1 over 6, which is equal to 3 over 6. But that is equal to 1 over R equivalent. Therefore, taking the reciprocal of both sides, R equivalent must be 6 over 3 or 2 ohms. If that's the case, then what is the current flowing in my circuit? It is 18 volts divided by 2 ohms. That's 9 amps. That's more current that was flowing in the circuit when I had both of the resistors in series. So here's a one-page summary of series and parallel circuits. So you can see them side by side. In the series circuit, because of the loop rule, all the voltages added up to the battery voltage. But the currents were all the same because there was no branching. And from that, we concluded that the equivalent resistance of the circuit was just a sum of the individual resistances. I also mentioned that you could use proportional reasoning to figure out what the voltage drop is across each element because of the fact that the voltages must have the same proportion as the resistances have since the currents are all the same. Now in the parallel circuits, it's the currents that add up because of the junction rule. But by the loop rule, all the voltages are the same. And that ended up meaning that we could use reciprocal addition. 1 over the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, etc. Now a powerful way to solve parallel circuits without having to go through all the work would be to just to notice that each loop is kind of independent. You can start the battery and go through each each circuit element and come back to the battery without even having to worry about what's over there on the other branches. This is how our homes are typically wired. When I plug something into my household socket, I don't worry about what else is plugged into my um, household wiring. I know that I'm going to have a 120 to 140 volt potential difference depending on how the, the uh, house is wired and set up um, in that circuit because they're all in parallel with the potential difference coming in uh, from the uh, uh, main circuit box. And for your convenience, here are the other four minutes we went over in this unit. Uh, we saw the definition of current was just the amount of charge that flows past a point per unit time or delta Q over delta T. We saw that the definition of resistance is R is equal to the potential divided by the current. And we saw this formula for the resistance being dependent on the resistivity, which is determined by the material that you're working with for your conductor. And its resistance is directly proportional to the length of your conductor, but inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. And lastly, we saw some power formulas power dissipated in a resistor perhaps is the current through the resistor times the potential difference across the resistor and using the above formulas for resistance voltage and current you can also work out that that's the current squared times r or the voltage squared divided by r <laughs>